I'll give you a thumbs up. It's live right now for your phone. It gives people time to join. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ولقد أنزلنا إليكم آيات مبينات ومثلا من الذين خلوا من قبلكم ومثلا من الذين خلوا من قبلكم من قبلكم وموعظة للمتقين الله نور السماوات والأرض مثل نوره كمشكاة فيها مصباح المصباح في زجاجة الزجاجة كأنها كوكب دري يوقد من شجرة مباركة زيتونة لا شرقية ولا غربية يكاد زيتها يضيء ولو لم تمسس نار نور على نور يهدي الله لنوره من يشاء ويضرب الله الأمثال للناس والله بكل شيء عليم في بيوت أدن الله أن ترفع ويذكر فيها اسمه يسبح له فيها بالغدو والآصال رجال لا تلهيهم تجارة ولا بيع عن ذكر الله ويقام الصلاة وإيتاء الزكاة يخافون يوما تتقلب فيه القلوب والأبصار ليجزيه الله أحسن ما عملوا ويزيدهم من فضله والله يرزق من يشاء بغير حساب أو كظلمات في بحر اللجي يغشاه موج من فوقه موج من فوقه سحاب ظلمات بعضها فوق بعض إذا أخرج يده لم يكد يراها ووجد الله عنده فوفاه حسابه الله سريع الحساب صدق الله العظيم ما شاء الله أحمد جزاك الله خير بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين uh, Respected brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I hope that all of you are doing well by the mercy of Allah سبحانه وتعالى We pray to Allah عز وجل and we ask him سبحانه وتعالى to accept from all of us, Allahumma Ameen. We ask him subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us piety and righteousness to make us from the people of taqwa, the people of shukr, Allahumma Ameen. Uh, today is uh, part two of the parable of life, uh, parable of light, the example of light, Mathalun Nur. And this is again Surah Al Nur, ayah number 35. Ayah number 35 of Surah Al-Nur. 
And um, uh, again, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I mentioned yesterday that this parable or this example is the most beautiful and the most profound example given in the entire Quran, but at the same time also the most difficult and complex example given similar. And we talked about the importance of light. And if there is no light, then subhanallah, everything around us is useless. Our eyes are useless. The universe is useless if you cannot see the beauty of the universe and everything around you, then subhanallah, there is no point. That's why first and foremost, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted us to appreciate light before we think about the internal light, before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes us appreciate the light that is inside of us, first Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted us subhanallah to think about the physical light, which is so powerful and so beautiful. But also yesterday I forgot to tell you something uh, very important about this ayah, uh, the ayah of An-Nur, the ayah of light, Surah An-Nur, ayah number 35, there is no ayah of the Quran. Very important subhanallah. There is no ayah of the Quran that has been commented on. More tafsir have been written and more pages of exposition have been done than this ayah or than this ayah of An-Nur, the parable of light. This ayah subhanallah, this verse has received the most commentary in our entire 14 and a half centuries of history. The, can you imagine that? This ayah has generated more tafsir than any other ayah in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Out of the 6,000 plus verses in the Quran, this verse has been commented on more than any other ayah in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To the point that the Imam al-Ghazali rahimahullah wrote an entire booklet, an entire booklet about this ayah. So subhanallah, the ayah is so beautiful, hundreds of opinion, hundreds of opinion regarding what is that niche and what is the lamp inside the niche and what is the glass that is around the lamp and what is that uh, olive tree that neither from the east nor from the west and what is light upon light? The ulama, subhanallah, talked about this ayah at length. That's why this is the most commented ayah that the ulama commented on in the entire book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So inshallah, I hope that, uh, let's see if I can finish it today, but I really want you to grasp the message that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us in this blessed ayah. I want all of you to get the point. There is a point that is so powerful. And wallahi, this ayah, I swear this ayah, can it change your entire life? Can it change the way you think? Can it change the way you see things around you? Can it change the, the, the way you see reality around you? This ayah had impacted me big time. The first time that I was exposed to this ayah, to be honest with you, when I was in college. Even though I memorized the Quran at the age, I finished the Quran at the age of 11. But the first time to be exposed to this ayah and the, the beauty of this ayah when I was in college, I guess the second or the third year of college. This subhanallah, I, I can tell you, blow me up. It shook me to the core. And I never forget that day, subhanallah. So my point, I really want you to grasp this message because once you get it, you will appreciate the revelation and the wahy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So yesterday we said, in order for us to be able to see, there are two lights you need, right? The, we said the, out, the inside light and the outside. And I talked about the inside is Nurul Ayn, right? The, your eyesight. And the outside is the, the light, the sun's light, the light of the universe. If one of them is missing, then again, we said you are good as, as blind. Okay, just like there are two ingredients to physical light, there are also two ingredients to spiritual light. So he, from here, 
I, I seek you, يعني from you, uh, a serious attention span, inshaAllah, Azza wa Jal. A serious attention span. Again, one more time. So just like there are two ingredients to physical light, there are also two ingredients to spiritual light. So the human being has a yearning inside of him or, or her. Uh, we have this light. We have, we have this light inside of us that, that wants something. That it's looking for some kind of perfection because it came from a perfect uh, source. And then when the revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes, when the words of Allah come, when the teachings of the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes, then this light is complete. So in the, these are the two passages or the two lights that meet with each other. But this is nothing from what I'm going to say later on, inshallah ta'ala. So let's look at the, 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 uh, the translation of the ayah one more time. Again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the light of the heavens and the earth. And then the example of his light, okay, مَثَلُ نُورِهِ The example of his light is like. So let's now talk, take it just one piece by piece. The example of his light like. مَثَلُ نُورِهِ كَمِشْكَةِ The example of his light is like, like an um, indent, you know, like a crevice, like a, like a niche in the wall, like a niche in the wall. By the way, we, we don't have these things nowadays but back in the day, they did not have what they call it running electricity. They didn't have running electricity uh, back in the day. So what they used to have to do, they make a little arch. They make a little arch in the, in the wall. And then so, so that they could put a, um, uh, a lamp in there. They could put a lamp in there, in that, in that crevice or in that, in that niche. And then subhanallah, when that lamp is turned on, it hits the back of the arch and it spreads it to the rest of the room. Again, when that light is turned on, it hits the back of the, the arch and it spreads it to the rest of the room. So they design, this, they design it in a way that it would capture the light and it spreads the light. And this is something many of us are familiar with. I, I remember that I used to have, I used to have one in, um, in our home, like I probably 30 years ago, we used to have something like this, like a niche in the wall, and we, we put a lamp, a lamp in that, in that niche. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَثَلُ نُورِهِ كَمِشْكَهِ Okay, so the example of his light, okay, is like a niche. And in it, in it, there is a misbah, lamp. In it, there is a misbah, misbah. And then that misbah, that lamp, is surrounded by a glass. So subhanAllah, I just want you to, uh, to visualize this and to imagine this scene. So you have a niche in the wall, and there is a misbah in the niche, uh, a lamp, and then that lamp is uh, surrounded by a glass, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that glass, not like any other glass, it's like a brilliant star, subhanallah. Allah says, al-musbah fi zujaja, al-zujaja tu ka'annaha kawkabun durri. I thought the lamp itself is like a brilliant star. No, not the lamp. Even the glass surrounding the lamp, is like a brilliant star. Can you imagine that? Just subhanAllah, look at the, the scene because you cannot appreciate the example unless you imagine the scene that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving. So the lamp is surrounded by a glass and then that glass is subhanAllah again like a brilliant star. Uh, the Quran used the word kawkabun durri. Kawkabun durri meaning durri is something that you, they say you... you Yuniru uh, binafsi. Yuniru binafsi is something that's lit on its own. It's so pure and refined. It feels like it got its own light and its own shine. It got its own light and its own shine. That kawkab durri by itself like a brilliant star. Like a brilliant star. 
and this is subhanallah uh, so so amazing that Allah even nowadays bulbs are what are surrounded by uh, by glass and so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again is using the same what the same language Allah is using our language so we can capture that the message that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us in this beautiful example right so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is using the, the our language using something from what we see day to day so we can appreciate the message and we can make Allah can make clarify things in our minds so so far we're talking about three things. We're talking about, uh, put them uh, together. We're talking about number one, a niche. This is the, the, the example of Allah's light. We're talking about a niche. And in it, there is a lamp. And that lamp is what? It's surrounded by a, a glass like a brilliant star. Now, let me ask you a question here. Um, let me ask you a question now, okay? And then, uh, there will be a prize. Whoever gets the answer, inshallah, will get a prize. But I'm not going to tell you what is the prize. Is. Let's get the answer first. Uh, is what we call it, is the image of everything going on. What we are talking about is the image of everything going on. Is that indoors or outdoors? The niche and the lamp and the glass around the lamp. Are we indoors or outdoors? Let's see who will get the first answer. Brother Zayfullah, did they get any answer? There is a delay, so give a few minutes to catch up, or one minute to catch up. Okay, sure. Well, again, very important. The question is, are we so far indoor or outdoors? The things that we're talking about, is it inside or outside? <clears throat> Noreen Khan says outdoors. Uh, Madwali Salah says indoors. Ali says okay, mashallah. Okay, whoever gets it right, then he will give uh, the he will give the talk instead of me tomorrow. <laughs> so now I think you regret that you answered. <laughs> okay, mashallah. May Allah bless you. No, we're talking about we are indoors. We're not outside yet. We are indoors because the niche is inside the house. The niche takes a place inside, not outside. And then with the musbah and the glass around the musbah. So we are indoors right now. Madwali okay. Sabah is the answer. Right? Okay, Madwali? Sabah. MashaAllah. Madwali? Sabah. It's one name or two names? Uh, one name. Madwali Sabah. Madwali Sabah. MashaAllah. Right May Allah bless the person, inshaAllah. MashaAllah. Yes. We are indoors. That is right. We're still in. Now we're going, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, um, uh, uh, this lamp is now fueled. This lamp is now fueled. Allah says, Subhanallah, fueled by what? By a tree. Uh, fueled by what? By a tree. And then what is going on right now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making us leave the home and think about something outside. So everything now inside, but the tree is outside the house. You don't have a tree inside your house. No, the tree is outside the house. So now this misbah, this lamp is getting its fuel from a tree and the tree is outside. So subhanAllah, the idea is the lamp is powered by something from the outside. Something from the outside is the source of its, of its light. What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? He said, Shajaratun mubaraka. He said, it's a blessed tree. A blessed tree. Use, Allah didn't say simply shajara, but Allah used the word mubaraka. And it comes from the word baraka, increase. Meaning, subhanallah, the, uh, whatever it gives, it, 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 it just gives beyond your expectations. It gives it beyond your expectations. So the point is that the lamp is lit by something that has no limits in its potential. Allahu Akbar. How a, so amazing, mashallah. So the lamp is lit by something that has no limits in its potential. Are you, you're with Shajara Mubarakah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, what kind of tree we're talking about? Huh? Zaytuna. It's an olive tree. 
it's an olive tree again on top of this it's an olive tree and we all know the olive tree or the um, the olive oil is the most refined and the most pure type of oil not only that but it has actually so many benefits we all know that right it can be consumed it can be used for food even you can use it to make sense you can put in the skin this is what the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said kulu waddahinu eat and then even use it like as a cream it has so many benefits especially the the um, the olive oil what 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 can what subhan what in the world what what kind of book is this subhanallah this is the divine speech of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so allah azza wa jal said Again, يُوْقَدُ مِنْ شَجَرَةٍ مُبَارَكَةٍ So the lamp is getting fueled from a blessed tree. And that tree is what? Is زيتونة. It's an olive tree. لا شرقية ولا غربية. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us a strange, strange description. لا شرقية ولا غربية. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is said, Neither of... So let me get this... Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is la sharqiyyatin wa la gharbiyya. So it's neither eastern nor western. Meaning, when the sun comes from the east, it's hitting one side of the tree. And when the sun is setting, it's hitting the other side of the tree. Again, la sharqiyyatin wa la gharbiyya. So when the sun comes from the east in the morning, it's hitting one side of the tree. And when the sun is setting, it's hitting the other side of the tree. What does this mean? It means that the tree is exposed to the sun's light 24-7. Subhanallah. Again, the tree is exposed to the sun's light 24-7. And this gives you the best type of oil. But this tree is not there anywhere. You cannot find this tree anywhere. Right, you cannot find this tree anywhere. Ibn Kathir rahimahullah ta'ala said in his tafsir, Zaytunatilla Sharqiyatin wala gharbiya, neither of the east nor of the west. This from Ibn Kathir, he said, means it is not in the eastern part of the land, so that it does not get any sun in the first part of the day, nor is it in the western part of the land, so that it is it is shaded from the sun before sunset but it is in a central position where it gets the sun from the beginning of the day until the end so its oil is good and pure and shining and also ibn kathir rahimullah said it, it is not in the west where it will get no sun when the sun sets nor is it in the west where it will get no sun when the sun rises but it is in a position where it will get some both at sunrise at and at sunset this is the meaning of لا شرقية ولا غربية okay لا شرقية ولا غربية then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says يكاد زيتها يضيء ولو لم تمسسه نار Nurun ala nur, and because of the purity of the oil, its oil wants to jump and catch the fire. Walau lam tamsas sunar, even though fire has not even touched it, because of the purity of the oil, it 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 just wants to jump and catch the fire, even though the fire even has not touched it yet. And Allah says, light upon light. Nurun ala nur. Yahdi Allahu li nurihi man yasha. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides to his light whomever he wills. Wa yadribu Allah. Allah sets forth these parables for people so that they may think, so that they may remember. So how many things do we have in the example so far? So now because very important insha'Allah ta'ala. How many things do we have so far? So we have... A niche. This is number one. And then in it there is a misbah, lamp. This is number two, so count. And then the lamp is what? Is surrounded by a glass. And that glass like a brilliant star. So this is number three. And then it gets its fuel from a blessed tree. And then it's, uh, it's an olive tree. Uh, on top of that, لا شرقية ولا غربية. Not in the east, nor in the west. 
and then yakadu zaytuha yudi'u wa law lam tamsasu nar its 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 oil is so pure and so refined that it has light itself without even catching the fire it has light itself nurun ala nur light upon light what does it mean nurun ala nur so you have the the lamp itself and the surround but the the the, the glass that is light because it's a kawkab undurri by itself, subhanAllah. And then it gets its fuel from somewhere that it's already, subhanAllah, has light. So two types of light, two nur on top of each other. Nur ala nur. Yahdi Allahu li nurihi man yasha. Wa yadribu Allahu al-anfala lil-nas. Wallahu bi kulli shay'in alim. So just I want, inshaAllah, to... Yani what you could give justice to this ayah. So I will have the rest of now we're gonna talk about where is the mishka? Now now we have now we go inside. So we finished everything outside right now. We talked about the example from the outside. Okay? From the outside. So everything you have that scene right in front of you. Now we need to take you inside. Let's see what is where is the mishka? Where is the lamp? What is the glass around it? What is that tree? Where it comes from? What is the first nur? And the type nur, nurun ala nur, yahdi Allahu li nurihi man yasha. Once you understand this, every time, insha'Allah ta'ala, you read Surah An-Nur, and you read ayah number 35, you're gonna pause, bi'idhni Allah ta'ala, you will make dua for me first, and then this will, it, it's, a, it's a life experience. You just gotta stop like this, and wallah, you will feel like you are speechless. You have nothing to say. You just keep saying, Subhanallah. Subhanallah, that's all. Because this scene, that's why I told you, this kind of example, written, books, books, some books were written on this ayah, just on this ayah. Hundreds of opinion. But Subhanallah, it took me a lot of time. To be honest, to read from here and there and put all of them together and then come to the conclusion. Even though all of them are very close to each other, but in my opinion, this tafsir that I'm giving to you, inshallah ta'ala, is the most, I would say, the most correct. And this is what the ayah is all about. So, bi'idhnillahi ta'ala, we'll continue with the rest. The tomorrow's probably halakha will be very short and very brief because what we have left is something very simple. But I just want you, inshallah ta'ala, to think about it and we'll see you tomorrow insha'Allah. Barakallahu feekum wa jazakumullahu khaira. It's already 25 minutes masha'Allah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless you all. I hope that you're enjoying this and every single ayah of the book of Allah has some secrets. Believe me. Every single ayah of the book of Allah has some secrets but it needs reflection. Again as, as I promised at the end of my series, inshallah, I'll give you some resources that will benefit you greatly. Believe, will benefit you greatly. I don't want you to just simply go and read the Quran from the Sahih International and the translation. Or go to the Noble Quran and read Alif Lam Mim Thalik Al Kitab Huda and that say Bismillah ar Rahman Rahim. No, this doesn't really give you anything whatsoever. At all, the ayah, what the ayah has to offer is much, much more than this mere translation. And this is what we wanna, what we wanna get from this month of Ramadan is to develop this connection with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We want, by the end of this Ramadan, we want to appreciate that divine message of Allah Azza That's the whole point of Ithnillah Azza wa We have more to come. We have some beautiful examples, inshaAllah. Barakallahu feekum wa jazakumullahu khaira. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.